April 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges chapters 4 and 5 from the Old Testament. The Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight after Ehud's death. The Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Canaan, who ruled in Hazor. The general of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth Hagoyim. The Israelites cried out for help to the Lord, because Sisera had 900 chariots with iron rim wheels, and he cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Now Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She would sit under the date palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel in the Ephraimite hill country. The Israelites would come up to her and have their disputes settled. She summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali. She said to him, Is it not true that the Lord God of Israel is commanding you, Go, march to Mount Tabor, take with you ten thousand men from Naphtali and Zebulun? I will bring Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to you at the Kishon River, along with his chariots and huge army. I will hand him over to you. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go, but if you do not go with me, I will not go. She said, I will indeed go with you, but you will not gain fame on the expedition you are undertaking, for the Lord will turn Sisera over to a woman. Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned men from Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. Ten thousand men followed him. Deborah went up with him as well. Now Heber the Kenite had moved away from the Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' father-in-law. He lived near the great tree in Zaanaim near Kadesh. When Sisera heard that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, he ordered all his chariotry, 900 chariots with iron-rimmed wheels, and all the troops he had with him to go from Herosheth Hagoyim to the river Kishon. Deborah said to Barak, Spring into action, for this is the day the Lord is handing Sisera over to you. Has the Lord not taken the lead? Barak quickly went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. The Lord routed Sisera, all his chariotry, and all his army with the edge of the sword. Sisera jumped out of his chariot and ran away on foot. Now Barak chased the chariots and the army all the way to Herosheth Hagoyim. Sisera's whole army died by the edge of the sword. Not even one survived. Now Sisera ran away on foot to the tent of Jael, wife of Heber the Kenite, for King Jabin of Hazor and the family of Heber the Kenite had made a peace treaty. Jael came out to welcome Sisera. She said to him, Stop and rest, my lord. Stop and rest with me. Don't be afraid. So Sisera stopped to rest in her tent, and she put a blanket over him. He said to her, Give me a little water to drink because I'm thirsty. She opened a goatskin container of milk and gave him some milk to drink. Then she covered him up again. He said to her, Stand watch at the entrance to the tent. If anyone comes along and asks you, Is there a man here? Say no. Then Jael, wife of Heber, took a tent peg in one hand and a hammer in the other. She crept up on him drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground while he was asleep from exhaustion, and he died. Now Barak was chasing Sisera. Jael went out to welcome him. She said to him, Come here, and I will show you the man you are searching for. He went with her into the tent, and there he saw Sisera sprawled out dead with the tent peg in his temple. That day God humiliated King Jabin of Canaan before the Israelites. Israel's power continued to overwhelm King Jabin of Canaan until they did away with him. On that day Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this victory song. When the leaders took the lead in Israel, when the people answered the call to war, praise the Lord. Hear, O kings, pay attention, O rulers, I will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord God of Israel. O Lord, when you departed from Seir, 
When you march from Edom's plains, the earth shook, the heavens poured down, the clouds poured down rain. The mountains trembled before the Lord, the God of Sinai, before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, caravans disappeared. Travelers had to go on winding side roads. Warriors were scarce. They were scarce in Israel until you arose, Deborah, until you arose as a motherly protector in Israel. God chose new leaders. Then fighters appeared in the city gates, but I swear not a shield or spear could be found among 40 military units in Israel. My heart went out to Israel's leaders, to the people who answered the call to war. Praise the Lord! You who ride on light-colored female donkeys, who sit on saddle blankets, you who walk on the road, pay attention. Hear the sound of those who divide the sheep among the watering places. There they tell of the Lord's victorious deeds, the victorious deeds of his warriors in Israel. Then the Lord's people went down to the city gates. Wake up! Wake up, Deborah! Wake up! Wake up! Sing a song! Wake up, Barak! Capture your prisoners of war, son of Abinoam! Then the survivors came down to the mighty ones. The Lord's people came down to me as warriors. They came from Ephraim, who uprooted Amalek. They follow after you, Benjamin, with your soldiers. From Maker, leaders came down. From Zebulun came the ones who marched, carrying an officer's staff. Issachar's leaders were with Deborah. The men of Issachar supported Barak. Into the valley they were sent under Barak's command. Among the clans of Reuben there was intense heart-searching. Why do you remain among the sheepfolds, listening to the shepherds playing their pipes for their flocks? As for the clans of Reuben, there was intense searching of heart. Gilead stayed put beyond the Jordan River. As for Dan, why did he seek temporary employment in the shipyards? Asher remained on the sea coast. He stayed by his harbors. The men of Zebulun were not concerned about their lives. Naphtali charged out onto the battlefields. Kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought. At Tanak by the waters of Megiddo, but they took no silver as plunder. From the skies the stars fought, from their pass in the heavens they fought against Sisera. The Kishon River carried them off, the river confronted them, the Kishon River. Step on the necks of the strong. The horses whose pounded the ground, the stallions galloped madly. Call judgment down on Miraz, says the Lord's angelic messenger. Be sure to call judgment down on those who live there because they did not come to help in the Lord's battle, to help in the Lord's battle against the warriors. The most rewarded of women should be Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. She should be the most rewarded of women who live in tents. He asked for water, and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for a king, she served him curds. Her left hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer, she hammered Sisera, she shattered his skull, she smashed his head, she drove the tent peg through his temple. Between her feet he collapsed. He fell limp and was lifeless. Between her feet he collapsed and fell limp. In the spot where he collapsed, there he fell limp, violently murdered. Through the window she looked, Sisera's mother cried out through the lattice. Why is his chariot so slow to return? Why are the hoofbeats of his chariot horses delayed? The wisest of her ladies answer. Indeed, she even thinks to herself. No doubt they are gathering and dividing the plunder. A girl or two for each man to rape. Sisera is grabbing up colorful cloth. He is grabbing up colorful embroidered cloth. Two pieces of colorful embroidered cloth for the neck of the plunderer. May all your enemies perish like this, O Lord, but may those who love you shine like the rising sun at its brightest. And the land had rest for forty years. God, yay for the women. <laughs> you know, I always find it fascinating, the story of how Deborah came into power. Um, 
back then women were thought of as even less than livestock, you know, traded traded into marriage and obviously didn't have any sort of authority. So I find that fascinating. It even says in the Bible um, that Deborah was married to a man named Lapidoth. And that alone is fascinating because usually it would be the other way around where the man may be mentioned as married, usually not even acknowledged as married, and very rarely his wife's name being mentioned. So I find all of that incredibly fascinating. One of the questions I'd like to ask you, God, when, when I get up there, how did Deborah come into, <laughs> into power? Um, we do know that she was sought out because she had great wisdom and was very spiritual and that she put you first. And people gravitated towards that uh, and decisions were made through her as people trusted more and more on her. In fact, even going into battle, uh, he said, I won't go unless you do. Uh, because they trusted her so much. So I find that incredibly fascinating. We don't know a whole lot about it, uh, but we do know that Deborah was obedient to you. And in the end, uh, she glorified you as the reason that Sisera was destroyed. I think the story also reflects very much that the world tries so hard to tell us who we can and can't be, whether it's a male female sort of thing or younger older thing or pretty and not pretty or smart and not smart thing and they keep trying to put labels on us and put us in boxes and I know with you all not some all things are possible and I, I truly believe that we need to keep that in mind and God I know that there's people listening right now that have been put in a box that the gifts that you've given them have been diminished because they've bought into what the world has told them whether that be advertising or peers or enemies or whoever has come into their life and told them that something couldn't be done. I think this story uh, shows over and over again that with you, anything can happen. With you, Deborah came into power, even though back then women couldn't even imagine doing something like that. Uh, that with you, they were able to take down uh, Sisera. Uh, that with you, a woman was able to kill a mighty warrior. Uh, that with you, they were able to have 40 years of peace in that land. Absolutely amazing. But it's all with you. Without you, we truly are nothing. We truly are what the world tells us we are. You know, it's, uh, I always find it fascinating that... Uh, I grew up with a learning disability. I'm sure now they would attach some sort of label to it. Uh, back then, they didn't know what was going on. Uh, they just knew I couldn't read and write. Uh, and instead of even some sort of help whatsoever, uh, I was just set aside in class as somebody who couldn't read and write. It was interesting because my mom spent an enormous amount of time every day after I got home from school teaching me how to read and write. I still struggle immensely with the writing part, immensely. Um, but I, I can read now um, and read so much. <laughs> I love devouring books. I love devouring your word. Um, but, but throughout that struggle into my life, even as of today, I still have people try and label me or try and tell me what I can and can't do. Uh, t had, pe had teachers in high school tell me um, that I might as well get a worker bee type of job, a minimum hour type of job where somebody told me what to do because I wouldn't ever amount to anything past that. Yet I, I went on to write a couple best-selling books. Um, I write quite a bit online now still an incredible struggle that takes me an enormous amount of time uh, but it's a huge part of the job that I have now the job that I created more importantly God the the gifts that you gave me all the things that people told me along the way that I couldn't do if I had listened to them daily video Bible wouldn't have happened so many people had so many reasons why that couldn't happen uh, including the fact of how in the world are you going to record 730 videos I don't know. God will figure that out. And for anybody listening who ever heard me talk about the project, you heard me say that a lot. I don't know. God will figure it out. 
Uh, and it's so amazing, God, because you always have. You've always come up with the money for this project. Uh, you've sent amazing people in to help with the project, with editing the videos and doing the PowerPoints, uh, helping with the social media part of it. Uh, you've always provided. Uh, by myself, couldn't have done this. Listening to the world, couldn't have done this. Uh, with you, all things are possible. God, today, I just pray for the labels that the world puts on us. Even sometimes the good labels truly affect us and it starts to be about us and our ego rather than, than about glorifying you. God, today I just pray that we focus on you, the person who made us, who can call us what we truly are, which is his chosen children. You gave us everything that we have. You made us every piece of us the way that we are and you know what our future is god it's only you who gets to attach labels to us and i am blessed and overwhelmed that the label that you have attached to me is that i am yours i love you very much in your son's name i pray amen <laughs>